Lord of Mysteries 2, Circle of Inevitability. Chapter 946, Five Star Rating. After returning to room 2303 with that painting, Jenna asked Franca, Should we have Lumian contact Stiano? He should be very interested in how to deal with this kind of painting. The previous self-portrait sketch of Liu Shan could be photographed, but not deleted, while this precipice bridge painting couldn't be photographed at all. Franca pondered for a few seconds, then smiled and said, That's one of the backup plans, but not the first choice. We currently only know that Stiano is interested in mystical photos that can spread online and can't be deleted. We're not sure if he has the desire to research paintings that can't be uploaded to the internet. Besides, always owing favors to someone or owing too many may not be a good thing. It will have to be repaid eventually. There's no such thing as a free lunch. It's similar to taking out micro loans. Do it appropriately and moderately, and be prepared to repay from the beginning. With the analogy of micro loans, Jenna immediately accepted Franca's reasoning. Then how do we deal with it? she asked. Franca's smile widened. Wait until dawn, then take this painting to the Star Dream Provisions store after the morning rush hour. Huh? Jenna couldn't quite follow Franca's train of thought. Franca, who had read extensively before her transmigration, always had a broad perspective. She chuckled softly. When you get to the Star Dream Provisions store, ask the shopkeeper if she'd buy items with mystical elements and how much she would offer. If she's willing to buy it, this painting probably won't be able to come back on its own. Can it be done like this? Jenna thought carefully and found it quite feasible. Based on the premise that only true gods could enter Mr. Fool's dream besides those who possessed medium items or had special connections, as well as details like contacting the major arcana cardholders by sending letters to the Church of the Evernight Goddess's high-ranking deacons through the Star Dream Provision Store and the dim environment of the store itself. Lumian's team could actually guess the shopkeeper's identity in reality, but they tacitly agreed not to mention it. If the shopkeeper agreed to buy this strange painting, it meant she definitely had a way to control the corresponding anomalies and truly transfer ownership to her hands. Moreover, wasn't it normal for a provision store focusing on mystical elements to purchase items with mystical elements? After pondering for a few seconds, Jenna asked, What if the shopkeeper doesn't want to buy it? Then ask if we can put this painting in her store for consignment. We'll pay a storage fee and give her a cut of the final sale. It's equivalent to paying her to handle the anomaly, Franca said with a smile. If she still doesn't agree, we'll contact Stiano through Lumion. If Stiano doesn't accept... You can take advantage of the daytime to find an opportunity to throw this painting at the police station. Remember to hide your identity well. At this point, Franca's expression suddenly turned serious. My spiritual intuition and mystical experience tell me that your process of dealing with this painting won't be very smooth. There will be dangers. If the danger is too great, you should actively exit the dream. We still have two more chances later, there's no need to risk your life now. Understood. Jenna nodded solemnly. Afterwards, she and Franca entered that strange space again and found Luo Shan once more guarding by the semi-transparent barrier in quite good condition. Franca revealed her identity as a colleague and started chatting casually with Luo Shan, learning more details about Zhu Mingrui's situation and which employees in various departments of the Intis group were worth noting. The results of the conversation left Franca and Jenna very satisfied, feeling that saving Luo Shan was not only a choice of emotion and stance, but also a very correct decision in the course of completing their mission. The information obtained from Luo Shan might have taken Franca and Lumian one or two months to slowly collect on their own. Later on, we'll need your help to convince Zhu Mingrui that he is the future messiah, Franca said to Luo Shan with a flattering smile. We can't directly tell him the truth. He definitely wouldn't believe it. He absolutely wouldn't believe it. No normal person would. They would just think it's a prank or a scam, Luo Shan nodded, then added in a small voice. 
I don't fully believe it myself now. Franca pretended not to hear Luo Shan's mumbling and changed the subject. When dawn broke and they automatically left that strange space, Franca got out of bed and took out the clothes she was going to wear today from the wardrobe, with a heavy expression. Before Jenna could speak, she took the initiative to say, There's a good chance you'll encounter danger and anomalies today, so it's better to dress in a way that allows for easier movement. Jenna nodded lightly, not refusing. Franca quickly finished washing up, took off her pajamas, and while slowly changing her clothes, she muttered, After I became a witch and adapted, sometimes when walking on the street, I would feel pleased and happy with people's gazes, thinking how charming I am. This might be a manifestation of a demoness's narcissism. But there's a difference between enjoying it yourself and being forced by others, and if you're not used to it yourself, you definitely won't like it. It's like when I was in school, they always required us to wear uniforms on Mondays, and there would always be some rebellious kids in each class who didn't want to, preferring to accept punishment instead. Franker rambled on, as if trying to distract herself and reduce the sense of embarrassment. She bent over, clumsily putting on the most conservative flesh-colored stockings, stepped into brand-new low-heeled shoes, then stood up and, using the full-length mirror embedded in the wardrobe, adjusted her blouse and light gray skirt that reached just above her knees. Looking at herself in the mirror, Franca pursed her lips, feeling quite complex. Jenna watched the whole time without saying a word. After applying makeup that made her look a bit less attractive, tying up her long hair, putting on glasses, and picking up a high-quality branded replica handbag, Franca walked steadily towards the door. Just before leaving, she turned back and smiled at Jenna. Thank you for not saying you look beautiful in this outfit or this really suits you. However, you seemed a little bit amazed just now. Hmm, that made me feel a bit better. Yes, Jenna returned with an affirming smile. Franca waved and walked out the door. She really is someone who's good at self-regulating her emotions and staying optimistic, Jenna sighed inwardly, turning her gaze away and patiently waiting for the morning rush hour to pass. Close to nine o'clock, she carried the painting and left Building 5, coming to the residential district's lobby. She chose to take a ride-hailing car to the Star Dream Provision Store instead of taking the subway and then switching to a bus. She was afraid that the painting's anomalies might affect more people. If that happened, the latent dangers might not do much to her, but the widespread commotion could bring about more serious problems. After a while, Jenna walked out of the lobby and came to the roadside, seeing a white sedan already waiting for her. After opening the car door with one hand, she glanced towards the driver's seat, confirming that the driver wasn't wearing a monocle and had no other obvious features. It was someone she didn't recognize and didn't trigger her spiritual intuition. Jenna sat in the back, placing the painting on her lap and holding it to her chest. After verifying the last digits of her phone number, the driver started the vehicle. Jenna was highly focused, vigilantly guarding against possible accidents. Suddenly, she felt her breathing become difficult, while there was no anomaly around her. It was as if another her was being pushed into the sea, and the feeling of drowning was transmitted through a mystical connection. Without hesitation, Jenna took out a mirror, plucked two strands of hair, trying to stick them to the mirror's surface and burn them with a demoness's black flames. She was attempting to cast a black magic related to the mirror's substitution, actively trying to transfer that mystical connection to the mirror. At this moment, Jenna had a hallucination. She saw gently swaying emerald green waves and her own hands flailing uncontrollably, as if struggling to swim to the surface. However, there was a force pulling at her legs, trying to drag her to the bottom of the sea. Almost simultaneously, a pale, swollen hand reached out from nowhere and covered her mouth. MMPH, MMPH, MMPH. Glug, glug, glug. Jenna showed obvious signs of drowning, her nose, respiratory tract, and lungs becoming extremely uncomfortable. She wanted to use her substitutes but couldn't sense those mirrors. 
she seemed to be separated from them in different worlds, even the mystical connection cut off. Suddenly, silent black flames flowed out from Jenna's eyeballs, nostrils, mouth, ears, and other places. These black flames burned her body from the inside out, burning all the invisible things trying to influence her. Outside the black flames, frost condensed, encasing Jenna in a thick ball of ice and snow. On the surface of the sphere, countless invisible spider silk retracted, wrapping layer by layer, forming a huge cocoon. Jenna finally no longer felt the agony of nearly drowning, but she still couldn't sense her body or substitutes. The next second, she found herself walking on a bridge. On the other side of the bridge was a steep cliff and a dark forest at the far end of the cliff. Have I entered that painting? Jenna tried to turn around and return to the starting point of the bridge, to escape the world inside the painting from the entrance, but she couldn't control her body and watched helplessly as she continued forward along the bridge. At this time, two people walked out of the dark forest. One was Luo Shan with a malicious face, and the other was Jenna herself. A Jenna with a seductive smile. Crack! The bridge suddenly broke, and Jenna fell towards the dark abyss whose bottom couldn't be seen. Great fear and despair invaded Jenna's mind, her consciousness rapidly blurring, unable to save herself. She seemed to already see the image of herself smashed into bloody pieces. Taking advantage of her consciousness not yet completely falling into darkness, before the unimaginable pain arrived, she mustered her last clarity, about to actively exit the dream. But it didn't work. It didn't work. Useless. Jenna's gaze suddenly froze. She didn't give up. She was still trying to save herself, gritting her teeth, struggling to regain control of her body to use the demoness's feather fall technique. At this moment, a ray of sunlight shone into the dark abyss, illuminating the cliff high above. All the scenes before Jenna's eyes instantly shattered and fragmented in the brilliant sunlight. She suddenly opened her eyes and found herself still sitting in the car, hugging that painting. We've arrived, the driver turned halfway, reminding Jenna. I arrived so quickly. Jenna felt as if she had been walking for an entire morning in a stuffy environment, her clothes soaked with sweat. She looked out the window somewhat bewilderedly and saw the Star Dream provision store. Jenna instinctively pushed open the door and got out of the car, wanting to rush into that shop to avoid other possible anomalies that might come later. Remember to give me a five-star rating, the driver called out to her retreating figure. Jenna unconsciously turned her body sideways, looking back at the driver. The driver had a smile at the corner of his mouth and somehow produced a crystal monocle, putting it on his right eye. Chapter 947, Equivalent Exchange Ammon, Jenna, standing beside the car, was stunned. She vaguely understood why she had been able to arrive at the Star Dream Provisions store early and escape that deadly hallucination at the most critical moment. In this matter, Ammon had provided help Otherwise, the consequences would have been unimaginable. She and Franca had already estimated the risks to the greatest extent possible, but they still hadn't anticipated that the real situation would be so terrifying that she wouldn't even have a chance to exit the dream. This was even with her being a demoness, with survival abilities and life-saving skills among the top of same-sequence Bayonders. Indeed, Eamon and his father are on the same side as us in awakening Mr. Fool, just with different desired paces of progress, so he only provided help once until now. Hmm, this help was aimed at that evil god of the fantasy association. If I had failed my mission today and died, would the painting have returned to Luo Shan on its own, leading to developments that Eamon and his father don't want to see? In an instant, Jenna thought of many things, not even having time to feel fear in hindsight. Please help close the car door, Ammon, with the monocle clasped in his right eye socket, reminded Jenna with a smile, just like a real ride-hailing driver. Only then did Jenna return to normal, closing the car door with her free hand. Watching the white sedan drive smoothly away from the street, Jenna, hugging the precipice painting, 
rushed into the Star Dream Provisions store without any regard for her image. Feeling the light suddenly dim considerably, Jenna immediately relaxed. Only then did she feel a surge of confusion. How could Ammon accurately accept my order? How did he know we had obtained this painting and were going to send it to the Star Dream Provisions store today? With everyone being suppressed to sequence 7, it's impossible to be so precise with prophecies and divinations. Could it be that true gods are a bit more special in the dream city, subject to different restrictions than us? So, did Ammon coincidentally save me with the help of his father? This could also explain why this painting was so difficult for me to resist, not even giving me a chance to save myself. If we were all at the sequence 7 level, it shouldn't have been like this, or perhaps I actually had a chance to break free from its influence, but being my first encounter with this type of attack, I made mistakes in my response and failed to notice details that could have been utilized. Jenna looked at the oil painting in her arms, suppressing her thoughts, and walked to the cashier at the very back of the Star Dream Provision Store. This could also explain why this painting was so difficult for me to resist, not even giving me a chance to save myself. If we were all at the sequence 7 level, it shouldn't have been like this. Or perhaps I actually had a chance to break free from its influence, but being my first encounter with this type of attack, I made mistakes in my response and failed to notice details that could have been utilized. Jenna looked at the oil painting in her arms, suppressing her thoughts, and walked to the cashier at the very back of the Star Dream Provision Store. Do you buy items with mystical elements? Jenna politely asked the shopkeeper who was playing with her phone. The shopkeeper slowly raised her head, and the blazing sunlight outside suddenly appeared to be obscured by clouds. Yes, we do, she said with a slight smile at Jenna. They really buy them. Jenna's heart leapt with joy, and she quickly placed the oil painting on the counter. Could you take a look and see if it meets your requirements? How much is it worth? The shopkeeper reached out a hand, bringing the painting in front of her, and after looking at it for a few seconds, said, 30,000. How much? Jenna instinctively doubted her ears. It wasn't that she thought this bizarre oil painting had no mystical value or wasn't worth $30,000, but rather that for her and Franca, this painting was a burden, a danger, something they would pay to get rid of. If the shopkeeper had said she would take the painting for 30000 Jenna thought that after discussing with Franca, they would grit their teeth and pay. As thoughts raced through her mind, Jenna considered a possibility. The shopkeeper of the Star Dream Provision Store was clearly an ally, and her current behavior was to provide more funds for their team. And money had a very important symbolic meaning in the Dream City. Not giving it directly, but using this opportunity of buying mystical items as the method. Is this because certain rules of the Dream City have to be satisfied? Rules that even gods can't violate? Equivalent exchange? If that's the case, it must have been quite difficult for the major Arcana cardholders to provide 2,000 in startup funds for each person. As Jenna pondered this, she subconsciously thought about whether she should haggle and try to raise the price a bit. Since they were allies, they should be happy to see such behavior, as it meant they could provide more help. After brief consideration, Jenna abandoned this idea. The person across from her was the manifestation or projection of a true god. The price she quoted must have been carefully considered to be the most suitable, appropriate, and least likely to cause anomalies. In terms of dream consciousness, every item has an estimated price. If the transaction price is too high, it would be considered problematic and might involve illegal activities, inevitably leading to reactive changes later. Thinking of this, Jenner responded to the shopkeeper, All right. When the shopkeeper actually transferred 30,000 yuan to her, she suddenly regretted letting Ludwig eat all the other paintings. Those might have been worth some money too. However, those were just painted by Luo Shan, probably not worth much, maybe just equivalent to Ludwig's late-night snack fee. Thank you, Jenna thanked the shopkeeper again and turned to walk out of the Star Dream provision store. 
the bright and brilliant sunlight from high above fell on her, finally giving her the feeling that the danger had completely passed. Only then did she begin to feel fear in hindsight. She still had many things she wanted to do, and several people she couldn't bear to part with. At the entrance of the tech building, Franca, wearing low-heeled shoes, carefully ascended the steps. Her current attire was something she had never worn before, instinctively giving her a sense of insecurity and embarrassment. This also made her more sensitive to the gazes and appraisals around her. She felt that the admiring ones were still acceptable, but those she previously considered impolite and a bit disgusting seemed to have increased, or perhaps she just noticed them more. Some people hurried past her, then turned back to look after taking a few steps, thinking they were being discreet, revealing slightly disappointed expressions. This seemed to be because her makeup, attire, and appearance didn't quite match what they had imagined after seeing her figure and clothes. Why are you being disappointed, asshole? Franca secretly gave the middle finger and cursed under her breath. She finished climbing the stairs and looked towards the security guard at the entrance, but didn't see Lumion. I thought we could communicate with eye contact at the entrance, pretending not to know each other on the surface, just like in some spy dramas, Franca muttered silently, entering the lobby and walking towards the elevator area. Inside the surveillance room, Lumion sat in front of several large screens divided into multiple scenes, carefully scrutinizing each image from a not-so-short distance yesterday's minor incident had given the security director Grimm an excuse to arrange for him to watch the surveillance cameras and patrol floors on rotation, no longer needing him to guard the main entrance. Lumian quickly noticed Franca in the elevator area. Although she had deliberately made herself less attractive, wearing old-fashioned black framed glasses and clothes she had never worn before, he still recognized her. It's a pity that Lai now only equates to top-level makeup skills and can't adjust height and figure to a certain extent, otherwise the disguise effect would be better. As it is now, it's still too eye-catching, Lumian commented inwardly. Seeing him watching so intently, the security guard sitting next to him rolled his eyes and said, clutching his stomach, Lai, my stomach hurts. I'm going to take a dump. Keep an eye on things yourself. Is this what they call getting paid to poop online? Lumian chuckled inwardly and said, Okay? This couldn't be better, maybe there's even a chance to check yesterday's surveillance footage and see how Zhu Mingrui reacted to my employment in private. What he did? After his colleague had really gone to the bathroom outside the surveillance room, Lumian saw that Franca had finally managed to squeeze into an elevator after two failed attempts. Suddenly, on the big screen, several images showing the situation inside the surveillance room went black. W.H. Lumian didn't move. Just two or three seconds later, there was an additional person beside him. It was Security Director Grimm, wearing a thin blue suit. Grimm, looking at the big screen, said in and seemingly casual manner, Be careful of Huang Tao. Be careful of Huang Tao? What relationship could Mr. Huang have with me? A male security guard? Lumian was puzzled and asked calmly, Why? Maintaining his posture of watching the surveillance footage, Grimm explained briefly, He has betrayed mother and is no longer mother's child. No longer, he was before, but not now. Madame Magician mentioned that in the Vortex event, although Emperor Roselle perished, he also severely injured the strongest broker, breaking free from the corruption of the Great Mother and retaining hope for resurrection. This and Ammon obtaining Mr. Fool's consent to reborrow power from his past self are different components of the same event. So, Mr. Fool learned about Emperor Roselle's status, his subconscious cognition changed accordingly causing Huang Tao and the Dream City to no longer secretly harbor the corruption of the Great Mother. Lumian preliminarily sorted out the logic. This also made him realize a problem. Previously, he only knew that accidents and encounters in the Dream might reflect in reality, bringing about real death or problematic advancements, but at this moment, he believed that changes in reality could also affect the Dream, provided that Mr. Fool truly perceived it. 
The dream and reality are not one way, they can interact. Lumian remembered this discovery, then turned to smile at Grimm. Don't you find it strange that as a child of God, I'm not female? Grimm showed a confused expression. Mother's children can be of any gender, or even genderless, or multiple genders. These are not important. What's important is the ability to procreate and bring new life. Child of God, why do you ask such a question? Grimm's brow furrowed slightly. Of course, it's to test you. Lumian laughed inwardly in response. He was testing whether Grimm only sensed that he was a child of God, or if he knew more specifically that the current child of God was Ombella, like Hand Bro. If Grimm knew that he was Ombella, he would be confused about the gender discrepancy. Otherwise, it would indicate that he indeed lacked the necessary wisdom and was more like an NPC as Franca had said, but influenced by the Great Mother. This also proved from another angle that there was a big problem with Hand Bro being able to call out the name Ombella. Lumian smiled and said to Grimm, I thought Mother had already let you know my true identity. As he spoke, his hair gradually lengthened and the lines of his face quickly softened. Chapter 948 New Employee Orientation Grimm's eyes suddenly reflected an indescribably beautiful face, but it vanished in an instant, like an intoxicating yet elusive dream. Lumian had already transformed back into his male state, his gaze returning to the surveillance screens. After a few seconds, Grimm remarked with some emotion, When I was looking at the files transferred from HR, I was thinking that a 22-year-old with a 7-year-old son would be very suitable to be mother's child, and could definitely be developed. I didn't expect, he he, truly worthy of being a child of God. I didn't alter my background information and it still had this benefit, who could have imagined this before? Lumian had to admit that some things were beyond even the conspirers' expectations. Suddenly, Grimm stood up and left the surveillance room. In just a few seconds, the cameras inside the surveillance room resumed their normal operation. Not long after, the security guard who had gone to defecate came back swaying and sat down next to Lumian. He asked in a low voice, The team lead didn't come, did he? This referred to Zhu Zinyang, the team lead of Security Team 2. No, Lumian answered honestly. Simultaneously, he silently added, The team leader indeed didn't come, but the director did. Just then, Lumian's phone vibrated. He turned his body, facing away from his colleague, discreetly took out his phone, unlocked the screen, and looked. The vibration was caused by a WeChat friend request. The applicant was Intis Group Grimm. After Lumian accepted, he took the opportunity to look at Grimm's moments. The most recent post from this Intis Group security director was, Children are more important than money, offspring are more important than work. This was accompanied by nine photos, each with a different child. Lumian quickly scrolled down and found that Grimm's moments had only one theme, which was sharing about his children. As expected of mothers chosen, Mr. Fool's subconscious cognition is still too conservative, only giving Grimm nine children. Well, it also has to conform to the daily situations of the Dream City. Lumian locked the screen, put the phone back in his pants pocket, and thought about how to use Grimm's connection in the future. He planned to inquire about what Grimm had been doing recently and how well he had been doing it under the pretext of a superior's assessment next time. Tenth floor, in TIS Group Administrative Department, in a separate small office. Franca, led by an HR employee, met Zhang King, the deputy director of the administrative department. He was also one of the interviewers at the time. Zhang King looked Franca over a few times and actually felt somewhat amazed. Of course, this was based on her state during the interview as a reference. He could only say that her figure was indeed very good and suited this outfit well. While feeling slightly amazed, Zhang King also started to feel a headache coming on. He worried that this new employee, Luo Fu, might be blindly arrogant and set her sights on Mr. Huang. 
He hoped she would honestly and diligently do her job and share the work between himself and the others. Thinking of this, Zhang King couldn't help but sigh inwardly. This was his daily state facing beautiful women of various styles every day. As a man, it was inevitable to have some emotional and desire fluctuations, but thinking that any of these beauties might become Mr. Huang's mistress at any time, he had to restrain himself and not show any abnormality. Moreover, these beauties would occasionally quarrel and fight, coming to his office crying to complain, requiring him to spend a lot of energy mediating. This made him physically and mentally exhausted every day, feeling a sense of spiritual impotence. Namo Amitabha. After Zhang King muttered to himself, he began to explain the daily work and precautions of the office to Franca according to the procedure. Finally, he said, I'll find an experienced employee to guide you. Your position will be arranged near that experienced employee. Franca took the initiative to say, Can you ask Luo Shan to guide me? I lie very close to her, we knew each other before, and it was she who made me full of longing for the company. Before officially starting work, Franca had already thought about what image she wanted to establish in the Antis group, a newcomer without much scheming, rather frank and cheerful, sometimes speaking without thinking. She felt that as long as she didn't deliberately think about problems, following her daily life state, she could play this role well. Zhang King nodded slightly, his expression relaxing considerably. All right. He stood up, led Franca out of the small office, and introduced her to other employees in the administrative department. Franca saw a series of beautiful women, all striving to highlight their own characteristics. There were innocent ones, glamorous ones, and those going for the pure and sexy look, giving a feeling of a hundred flowers blooming. These women were all alert at first glance of Franca, but after their gaze fell on her face and scrutinized for a few seconds, they relaxed. Some of them perfunctorily greeted her, then picked up their makeup mirrors to touch up their makeup, while others enthusiastically chatted with Franca, thinking about dumping some of their work on this newcomer later. Franca, having managed a large number of dancers before, was not at all unfamiliar with such occasions and naturally and appropriately followed Zhang King around the administrative department. Seeing this, Zhang King imperceptibly nodded. Indeed, she has three years of work experience, and the evaluation from her previous job is also very good. Well, after seeing so many star-like beauties, she shouldn't have any unrealistic thoughts, right? Franca noticed that about half of the employees in the administrative department were working seriously, and among them were also many good-looking women. Some of them were purely attracted by the high salaries of the Intis group, not very interested in Mr. Huang, and had no hope for possible favor. Rather than becoming Mr. Huang's mistress, they wanted to develop in their careers and prove themselves. Others planned to establish the image of a capable woman, thinking that maybe Mr. Huang liked this type recently. After introducing Franca to the employees of the administrative department, Zhang King stopped near Luo Shan's position and nodded slightly. Luo Shan has gone to the foreign trade department and will be back later. Since you already know each other, I don't need to introduce you. Well, Mr. Ed is currently entertaining distinguished guests and is not in the company. I'll take you to meet him later. Mr. Ed referred to Edward, the vice president of the Intis Group, in charge of administration and business. Entertaining distinguished guests, Zaratulstra mentioned in the information from the major arcana cardholders, this person is most likely a subordinate of the Celestial Worthy, suspected to be a seer pathway angel who is currently possessing Loki, Franca pondered as she replied to Zhang King. She then sat down at the desk not far from Liu Shan's position, hiding her legs under the table. This gave her back a sense of security, and the faint shame subsided. After Zhang King left, Franca sat in her position, looked around the bright and clean administrative department, and silently exclaimed, So this is what working is like. During the time after her transmigration when she lived on the original body's savings, she naturally thought about not eating away at his savings. 
but she didn't understand the skills the original body knew, and the original body had no education, so she could only find jobs like waitressing and kitchen helper. Then, because she couldn't stand the conscience of those merchants and was unwilling to make counterfeit goods or help deceive innocent people, she couldn't last more than a few days before being fired either voluntarily or involuntarily. Almost no job lasted a full month, and there were a few times when she was almost beaten up. In her view, this was no different from doing internships or summer jobs during college, and now was her first real job, especially in a dream city very similar to the world she transmigrated from. While observing naturally, Franca saw those paintings on Luo Shan's desk. Her heart suddenly skipped a beat. Luo Shan's paintings at home have been cleaned up, but there are still some here. After some consideration, Franca stood up, walked to Luo Shan's seat, tore down all the paintings that could be torn down, and threw the ones that couldn't be torn down into the trash can along with the items. Just as she finished doing this, she felt someone watching her. She quickly turned around and saw a young man standing in the aisle near Luo Shan's position. The man wore plain glasses and a plaid shirt interwoven with three colors. His appearance was slightly handsome with a very clear chin. It was Zhu Mingrui. Damn, I've directly encountered Mr. Fool's dream image, seeing Zhu Mingrui's confused expression, Franca quickly explained. Luo Shan asked me to help deal with it. Zhu Mingrui looked at the paintings and items in the trash can and said as if talking to himself, Luo Shan asked to throw them away. He then glanced at Franca's heel height and muttered in his heart. With such low heels, she's still a bit taller than me. Franca nodded repeatedly. Yes. Zhu Mingrui withdrew his gaze and smiled politely. Where did Luo Shan go? I have something to discuss with her. She went to the foreign trade department to coordinate something, Franker repeated Jang King's words. I see, Zhu Mingrui then asked, are you transferred from another department to the administrative department? I don't think I've seen you before. I just joined, Franka answered honestly. Seeing Zhu Mingrui's gaze unconsciously move towards Luo Shan's seat, Franca controlled her inner nervousness and smiled naturally. Luo Shan and I are neighbors, we knew each other before. Before she went to handle something, she asked me to help her throw away all these paintings. She doesn't want them anymore. Doesn't want them anymore, Zhu Mingrui repeated this sentence softly, then asked Franca with a colleague's attitude, Did Luo Shan give you an internal recommendation? No, Franca said with a slight pride. I relied on my own abilities. Then, she said in a teasing tone, maybe the administrative department has been busier recently and needs more people who can really get things done. She didn't want Mr. Fool's dream image to think she was a gold digger. Zhu Mingrui exchanged a few more pleasantries, left the administrative department, and returned to the opposite side. Franca sat back in her position and quietly let out a sigh of relief. Fortunately, I've been well trained in front of the demoness of black. Mr. Fool, uh, Ju Mingrui shouldn't have noticed that I was a bit nervous just now, right? It's normal to be nervous. After all, being caught throwing away a colleague's belongings behind their back. In the security department, Lumian took the opportunity of going to the bathroom to take out his phone and clicked on the dialog box with Anderson Hood. The chat interface was still on the initial greeting message. Chapter 949, Action Outline Lumian waited until the dream tutoring classes opened before sending a WeChat voice message to Anderson Hood. Mr. Anderson, does your tutoring school have painting classes? A friend of mine wants to know. Late last night, after receiving Jenna's message, Lumian had been thinking about how to probe Anderson Hood. Based on the premise that Luo Shan had been controlled and her personality alteration had been initially resolved, he felt this matter was not urgent. There was no need to screenshot the legal representative and shareholder information of Colorful Hostel and send it directly to Anderson, teasing him about having other businesses on the side. 
then observe the subsequent reactions and wait for any unexpected developments that might result. He planned to start with the painting issue, making initial probes, preferably without alerting Anderson. Anderson didn't immediately reply to Lumian, and Lumian didn't linger in the bathroom. After putting his phone in his pants pocket, he walked back to the surveillance room. Looking at the large screens in front, his mind flashed through some experiments he had done and needed to do. 1. Observe Mr. Fool's dream manifestation Zhu Mingrui and the people around him. 2. First contact with Zhu Mingrui during the day, leaving a certain impression. 3. Contact people close to Zhu Mingrui, divided into multiple stages, eliminating the suspicion of one target before contacting the second, and so on. 4. Contact Zhu Mingrui again during the day, leaving a deeper impression. 5. Establish a relationship with Zhu Mingrui during the day where they can chat, hinting at the existence of Bayonder powers and his goodwill. 6. First contact with Zhu Mingrui at night. 7. Hint at the existence of Bayonder powers and his goodwill to Zhu Mingrui at night. 8. Based on the results of previous experiments and information gathered, formulate an official awakening plan. This was the action outline for Lumian's team. Currently, the first four parts had been completed without any members being kicked out of the dream or restricted the third part was spread throughout all subsequent steps and team members responsible for contact had to self-isolate for a day and night before continuing to advance. The danger gradually increased in the later parts. Lumian didn't think about avoiding it, because determining the degree and source of danger was one of the purposes of the experiment. Only by knowing what could be done, what couldn't be done, what would lead to immediate expulsion, and what would take time to explode, could their team officially enter the eighth part of the action outline and formulate a targeted awakening plan. At this stage, Lumian wasn't worried or afraid of failure. He was worried and afraid of not being able to find the reasons for failure. With this mindset, he approached many things with a testing attitude, including whether the information shredder worked, whether Stiano was trustworthy, what relationship Anderson Hood had with the painter pathway, whether Grimm had become one of the great mother's tools to influence the dream, and so on. After obtaining the test results, they would contact the major Arcana card holders to compare accounts, which might reveal some interesting and useful details. If they had consulted the major Arcana card holders from the beginning, forming preconceived notions and fixed thinking patterns, they might not have tested some things, and thus wouldn't have obtained their own results. Their minds would only have the conclusions given by the major Arcana card holders, which might cause them to miss key information. As Lumian was pondering what to do next, he noticed an extra person in one of the surveillance footage on the 10th floor. The camera was aimed at the entrance of Aurora Company, and a person wearing a black robe with a wide, deep hood, completely out of place among the nearby white-collar workers, walked out. Suddenly, a bunch of things fell out from inside the person's robe, landing on the floor. The person quickly crouched down, the hem of the robe covering the fallen objects. When he stood up, the ground was clean again, without any items. After watching this person walk out of the surveillance frame and seeing him enter the elevator through the elevator surveillance, Lumian silently said to himself, the corresponding image of a certain Aurora Order mister in the Dream City. The security guard sitting next to him followed his gaze and laughed. It's fine. Those clowns from Aurora Company are like that. It's nothing. It's nothing. I thought it was some kind of performance art, Lumian said as he saw Luo Shan walk out of the elevator and enter in Tis Group. In the administrative department, large office. Luo Shan stood confused next to her position, seeing her desk with fewer items. I helped you throw away all those paintings, Franco walked up to Luo Shan and explained with a smile. Luo Shan suddenly realized. I had forgotten about that, I'll draw some new ones later. She paused, looked around, and asked in a lowered voice, Can I, can I still paint later? 
Yes, it doesn't affect your ability to use your power, Franca comforted her quietly, then raised her volume. Director Zhang asked you to familiarize me with the work process. Zhang King's full title was Deputy Director of the Administrative Department of Intis Group. All right, Luo Shan pulled Franca over and openly chatted about various rumors within the company. Finally, Luo Shan said, I forgot to tell you last night, there's a very fierce young security guard recently. He even dares to confront those MCN company people. He's really handsome, but don't tell anyone. He already has a seven-year-old son, and he's only 22. Theoretically speaking, I am the child's mother, one of them. Franca's mouth twitched slightly as she echoed with emotion. Doesn't that mean he had a child in middle school? After chatting about this for a while, Franca returned to her seat and entered work mode according to Luo Shan's guidance. After familiarizing herself with the office system, she rotated her chair and stood up, wanting to help Luo Shan share some work. She saw Luo Shan holding a pencil, focused on drawing on a white paper. What is she drawing? Franca softened her steps and silently walked to Luo Shan's side. She found that Luo Shan was sketching her own portrait, with the Luo Shan in the drawing having hollow eyes, a cold expression, and a curled mouth. W.H. Franca's eyes focused, and she immediately reached out her right hand and patted Luo Shan's shoulder. What are you drawing? Luo Shan was startled and quickly stopped drawing. She turned her body, and seeing it was Franca, she visibly relaxed and pressed her chest saying, You scared me. I thought old Zhang had caught me slacking off. As she spoke, Luo Shan glanced at the sketch on the table, and her expression quickly became terrified. Debi, why would I draw this? Franca pondered for two seconds and showed a smile that made Luo Shan extremely reassured. Don't worry, you can finish the last few strokes, I'll handle it. Luo Shan, uncertain and frightened, leaned forward again and added the last few strokes making the portrait more lifelike. As soon as she finished drawing, the Luo Shan in the sketch presented a state as if about to come alive. Franca grabbed the drawing, and black flames burned discreetly in her palm. The expression of Luo Shan in the drawing immediately became painful, full of resentment and hatred, as if she was being burned by flames. In the blink of an eye, the drawing curled up, showed signs of spontaneous combustion, quickly turned to ashes, and fell into the trash can. While completing this, Franca used the mirror maze through the transparent screen on the side of the desk, Luo Shan's phone screen, and the mirror being used by a nearby colleague for makeup touch-ups, to deal with the camera surveillance, not leaving traces of Beyonder powers in the corresponding footage. Luo Shan stared blankly as Franca dealt with the portrait, and after a few seconds said, I feel like my whole being is much lighter again, my mood is better. Franca nodded and said, You can treat it as another release of negative emotions and desires. She considered for two seconds and added, Currently, we can only treat your symptoms, not solve the root cause of the problem. Simply put, we can only treat the symptoms, not cure the disease. So, you need to be vigilant about your own state, do self-examination from time to time, and if you find something wrong, immediately come to us for a new round of treatment. Don't delay, otherwise, behavior like just now will happen again, and the consequences are unpredictable. Power is a double-edged sword. It can harm others and also harm oneself. This will accompany us for life. Luo Shan listened quietly, remained silent for a moment, then lowered her head and smiled. I understand what you mean. I hope, hope I can hold on for a few more years, preferably until I retire. No, let me enjoy life for five more years after retirement. Seeing Liu Shan's smile, Franca suddenly felt it was a bit dazzling, making her eyes ache. She comforted in a gentle voice. If you can hold on, you must hold on. It's like some diseases that were terminal in earlier years, but if you actively cooperate with treatment and try to prolong life as much as possible, with the development of technology, they can now be cured or better controlled. In the future, we might become stronger, 
or we might meet stronger people who have ways to solve the problem of power corruption. Liu Shan nodded slowly and smiled at Franca. I'll try hard, and you should work hard too. Let's all work hard. Franca remained silent for a moment, deactivated the mirror maze, and returned to her own seat. She picked up her phone and found that Jenna, with the nickname Nana and Lily, had sent her a message describing the dangers encountered on the way to deliver the painting to Star Dream Provisions Store, the help received, and the final result. Franca felt a wave of fear reading it, quite regretful that she hadn't accompanied Jenna. She had anticipated great danger, but thought that Jenna, who could actively exit the dream, would at most waste one opportunity. She didn't expect that the power representing the Fantasy Association's evil god could prevent them from returning to reality. Jenna had almost really died. Fortunately, Amon and his father are on our side. Jenna's experience also provided us with important intelligence. In the future, when encountering people and objects of the painter pathway, we need to be careful about not being able to exit the dream. Franca, thinking of Lumian about to or already probing Anderson Hood, quickly forwarded Jenna's message to him and reminded him to remember to delete it using the information shredder. After confirming that Lumian was currently fine and had received the warning, Franca glanced sideways at Luo Shan, roughly understanding why her condition had suddenly relapsed earlier. It coincided with the time when that painting appeared abnormal and Jenna nearly died. Inside the surveillance room. After deleting the messages from Franca and Jenna using the information shredder, Lumian pinged Anthony. He continued to watch the surveillance, looking for potentially abnormal people and events. At this time, Zhu Xinyang, the leader of Security Team 2, entered the surveillance room and patted the shoulders of his two subordinates. After work this afternoon, let's go visit Old Wang and Old Ding together. They're out of danger now. After visiting the hospital, let's gather with all the folks who aren't on shifts. It's also to welcome Little Lai to our team. Old Wang and Old Ding, Lumian could guess who the team leader was talking about, but still had to put on a confused expression. Zhu Xinyang, with his burly build, square face, and very tan skin, said with both amusement and helplessness, Didn't you see the news? Several of our folks were struck by lightning. Fortunately, it wasn't people from our team too who died. Damn, how did they get struck by lightning? Oh, I remember now, Lumian then asked, which hospital are Old Wang and Old Ding in? Zhu Xinyang answered simply, Mashu Hospital. Chapter 950, Dinner Invitation It's really Mushu Hospital. Lumian wasn't surprised at all by Zhu Xinyang's answer. He grunted in acknowledgement. All right, team lead. He had thought about it. As an important base for evil gods to influence the dream city, and with some degree of cooperation with the celestial worthy, Mushu Hospital might be unavoidable for many things to come. It wasn't a matter of cautiously avoiding it or not entering, pretending it didn't exist. So, rather than that, why not take advantage of the daytime? While their actions hadn't yet reached a critical stage, while he still had another chance to enter, and while he had a reasonable and legitimate excuse to go take a look and investigate in person. Of course, the underground floors that likely represented the abyss and Mr. Fool's psychological dark side still couldn't be recklessly entered. After seeing off Zhu Xinyang, Lumian stayed in the surveillance room until almost noon. He and his shift partner Old Zia waited for their colleagues to relieve them, then went downstairs together to the Intis Group staff cafeteria located in the annex building of the tech building for lunch. They didn't get meal allowances, and the cafeteria wasn't free, but it had a wide variety of dishes, and the prices were kept quite cheap through company subsidies. So, whether from headquarters or branch offices, employees in this building all liked eating in the cafeteria. Even Mr. Huang himself would come eat there occasionally to check the quality of the food. The only problem was that during the lunch rush, the cafeteria was packed. Higher income employees preferred to order takeout or dine at nearby malls. 
as security guards when they could go to the cafeteria depended on when their colleagues came to relieve them. Everyone tacitly agreed to come a bit earlier to avoid the peak hours. Lumian got steamed eggs with minced meat, stir-fried yellow chives and meat with pickled peppers, fried chicken leg, cucumber and pork soup, and a big bowl of rice. He found a corner spot with old Zia and listened to him chat about the antics of the Aurora Company folks while eating. Old Zia clicked his tongue and said, Their boss is an exhibitionist, or the M in S and M, often with whip marks on his body. Say more, slander some more, I love hearing it. Lumian nodded along while inwardly muttering. Suddenly, his phone vibrated twice. He picked it up and saw a message from a name that leaves a deep impression on you. Which was Anderson Hood? Is that friend you mentioned actually yourself? Lumian smiled and replied using voice input. You could interpret it that way. He felt that in conversations between hunters, whoever got anxious first, whoever got angry first, whoever felt guilty first, would lose. Only by adjusting oneself to a state where nothing mattered could one stand undefeated. After about 20-30 seconds, Anderson replied, Painting requires talent, I hope you have it. Our tutoring school doesn't have painting classes, but I know a decent studio, that's where I learned. If you're interested, tomorrow night at 7, meet me at the entrance of Jingxu Dongfang Community on Sifang Street, and I'll take you for a tour. At night, Lumian pondered for a moment before replying, All right, thank you. He remembered that Colorful Hostel was on Sifang Street, but the interior renovation and decoration hadn't been completed yet. In the administrative department, large office, Luo Shan stretched lazily, walked over to Franca's desk, and asked with a smile, What are you eating for lunch? I don't want to join the crowd at the cafeteria. Without waiting for Franca to respond, she lowered her voice and said, Other departments all find time to have team dinners to welcome new employees, only our administrative department doesn't. Mainly because those ladies don't want to or think little of us, which is fine, but the worry is that they'll insist on going, wanting to find some free helpers. Tesk, can you imagine how that would develop? Sarcasm and veiled barbs are the norm, with people crying, arguing, or even wanting to get physical not being uncommon. It left a bunch of trouble to deal with afterward, so old Jang simply stopped organizing departmental dinners. Those who get along well just gather privately, however they want. Franca listened with relish and said expectantly, I wonder when Mr. Huang will next come to the administrative department. The scene then would surely be spectacular, she wanted to witness it. Demonesses inevitably tended to have a bit of a chaos-loving inclination, which was very justifiable when it came to watching drama. Mr. Huang probably won't come in the next few days, he has vips to entertain, and even if he comes to the company, he'll go to the 16th floor, Luo Shan disclosed Mr. Huang's whereabouts. Zaratulstra. Franco was very attentive and serious about this matter. Besides the items listed in the action outline, they also had to guard against the celestial worthy and evil gods doing bad things to Zhu Mingrui in the Dream City. They needed to discover and prevent it early. Moreover, this could also accumulate inspiration to help them formulate an awakening plan how the Celestial Worthy's subordinates did it, and they could try to do the opposite. What a pity, Franca said with a look of regret. She then asked curiously, Won't Mr. Huang bring the VIP to tour the company? He has before, Luo Shan suddenly paused, her voice becoming even lower. That day Zhu Mingrui happened to be on sick leave. Franca, could that long-named VIP be the destroyer you mentioned, sent from the future to the present by evil forces? Was Yu Mingrui's sick leave arranged by your people? A painter's spiritual intuition is quite strong, Franca smiled and said, Is that VIP called Zaratustra? Liuo Shan nodded solemnly. Then it is, Franca confirmed her earlier guess. Liuo Shan was silent for a few seconds, then her eyes lit up and she said, why don't I ask Zhu Mingrui to have dinner with us? That way you'll have a chance to meet and chat with him. Holy crap, so fast, 
so direct, Franca felt a bit shocked. She had thought it would take her and Lumian a week or two to naturally contact Zhu Mingrui through work matters before reaching a point where they could add each other on WeChat or have casual chats. Who knew that on her first day of work, Liu Shan would invite Zhu Mingrui to have dinner together. It's too, too fast. This progress is too advanced, I'm not ready yet. Seeing that Franca hadn't answered, Liu Shan smiled and said, Zhu Mingrui owes me several meals. Every time he asks me for information, he says he'll treat me to a meal next time, but so far he's only done it once. Hmm, welcoming my bestie to the company is a good reason. As she spoke, she picked up her phone and started tapping out a message to Zhu Mingrui. After a while, Luo Shen waved her phone and said, he agreed, but said it would be dinner tomorrow because he has to work overtime tonight and tech people have too little lunch break time to go eat something nice. He agreed just like that. No stress reaction, no excuses. Franca suddenly recalled an old saying, the best way to get close to someone is to know the people around them. Helping Luo Shan was indeed the right choice. This is karma rewarding kindness. Franca pondered for a moment, then said to Luo Shan, Zhu Mingrui seemed a bit concerned about those paintings you had on your desk before. He didn't refuse your invitation, but agreed to it. Maybe he also wants to confirm or probe something. Without waiting for Liu Shan to respond, Franca added, If that's really the case, it's a good thing. The only question is, does dinner count as nighttime? This goes against the plan in the action outline, and could lead to confusion and ambiguity in the experimental results. It shouldn't count if it's not completely dark, right? At 4.30 in the afternoon, after another round of patrolling the floors, Lumian and old Zia came to the underground parking lot of the tech building. They saw team lead Zhu Zinyang sitting in a dark gray SUV, reaching out from the passenger seat and waving at them. Over here. Lumian and old Zia walked over and sat in the spacious back seat. Just us few, old Zia looked out the window. Zhu Zinyang laughed. Who goes to visit patients at a hospital in a big group? The nurses wouldn't let us in. Just the four of us, Zhao is driving. The others will wait directly at the dinner place. Zhao was the young man sitting in the driver's seat, looking a bit chubby from the side. At this time, the roads were still fairly clear. Before five o'clock, Lumian and the others had arrived outside Mushu Hospital. Two young men, each carrying a box of fruit and a bag of nutritional supplements, followed behind Zhu Zinyang and old Zia as they walked in. The lobby of Mushu Hospital was no different from when Lumian last came, ordinary, with people coming and going. Only occasionally could one notice certain orderlies with indifferent gazes and slightly mechanical movements. Lumian withdrew his gaze, confirming that his spirituality gave no warning and there were no abnormalities around, then entered the elevator going up and arrived on the twelfth floor. Exiting the elevator area and turning into the ward, after pushing open the door, what met his eyes was a quiet nurse's station and a corridor extending into darkness. The light at the end of the corridor seemed to be broken, not yet repaired. Led by a nurse who looked very normal, they entered a double patient room where old Wang and old Ding were. Before Lumian, Zhao, and old Zia could get a clear look at the patient's condition, two bedside family members rushed in front of Zhu Zinyang, speaking one after another. Team lead Zhu, this is definitely a work-related injury for our old Wang. Boohoo, team lead Zhu, our old Ding almost died. Look at him, look at him, who knows how long it will take to recover. Zhu Zinyang finally found an opportunity and pressed his right hand down. Ladies, this will definitely count as a work injury. Mr. Huang said that not only will there be compensation according to national standards, but the company will also give an additional sum, as well as cover all medical expenses beyond insurance and continue to pay normal wages until old Wang and old Ding fully recover and can return to work. We won't let one of us bleed, sweat, and cry. 
While Zhu Zinyang was comforting the family members, Lumian and the others turned their gaze to the hospital beds, seeing the two patients wrapped from head to toe in white bandages, with only their eyes, noses, and mouths exposed. Old Zia couldn't help but lean close to Lumian and say in a low voice, I don't mean to be unkind, but they really look funny like this. I thought only TV shows wrapped people up like this. Didn't expect to see it in real life too. Lumian didn't respond to old Zia because he thought of mummies. Mummies that were said to have close connections with the wraith pathway controlled by the mother tree of desire. And this was Mushu Hospital. The novel will be updated first on this website. Come back and continue reading tomorrow, everyone.